1976 was a momentous year. It marked 200 years since American independence. To celebrate the occasion, new versions of three denominations were produced. One of those was the half dollar, commonly referred to as the Kennedy half dollar. We're going to explore the 1976 half dollar value. We'll look at the difference between a coin that's worth a few dollars and one that's worth thousands. And we'll investigate some of the error coins that are worth big money. The half dollar struck in 1976 marked 200 years since the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Three commemorative coins were proposed to mark the occasion, a quarter, a half dollar, and a dollar. The proposals came from a special committee that had been set up a decade earlier to prepare for the bicentenary. But the Treasury were at first reluctant to go along with the idea. Previous issues of commemorative coins had not always been successful, and the nadir had been reached with commemorative coins featuring George Washington Carver and Booker T. Washington. Distribution problems led to the coins being repeatedly discounted before many finally passed into circulation. And the resulting bad publicity meant the Treasury was wary of a repeat performance. But there was strong political support for the commemorative coins, and in 1972, the Treasury dropped its opposition. A competition was run to find a design for the new coins. Anyone could submit a design, and over 15,000 inquiries were made before the competition deadline. In the end, over 800 designs were submitted, and a judging panel was established to draw up a shortlist. The shortlist featured 12 entries, which were then whittled down to six. The committee put final recommendations to the Treasury Secretary, George Schultz. He chose a design featuring Independence Hall for the reverse of the half dollar. In 1974, the successful designers of the three commemorative coins were invited to the Mint facility in Philadelphia. Here, a ceremonial striking of the first coins took place. Three prototypes of each denomination were preserved and included in special presentation sets for VIPs. The rest were melted down. The first half dollars available to the public were issued in July 1975. Ceremonies to mark the moment were held at Minneapolis, the hometown of the winning designer, Seth Huntington. The sets were produced in very large numbers, intended to give every American the chance to own a commemorative coin. But many did not sell, and in 1982, with silver prices rising, many of the unsold silver coins were melted down. The obverse of the bicentennial half-dollar remained largely the same as the coins from the previous year. They still bore the image of John F. Kennedy produced by the Mint's chief engraver at the time of the first Kennedy half-dollars, Gilroy Roberts. Above Kennedy's image, the word liberty curves around the upper two-thirds of the coin edge, and the motto, In God We Trust, appears alongside Kennedy's neck. The only difference from earlier half-dollars was the date. The bicentennial edition had two dates beneath the portrait. These read 1776-1976, with a dot separating the years. The only difference from earlier half dollars was the date. The bicentennial edition had two dates beneath the portrait. These read 1776-1976, with a dot separating the years. The commemorative Kennedy half dollar was produced in both silver and copper clad in cupronical. The silver coins weigh 11.5 grams. Clad half dollars are slightly lighter, at 11.3 grams. Clad coins were struck at Philadelphia and Denver, with clad proofs being struck in San Francisco. All the silver half dollars were struck at San Francisco. All the coins measure 31 millimeters across. The clad half dollars have a copper core clad in an alloy of 75% copper and 25% nickel, while the silver half dollars are 40% silver. They have a core of 21% silver and 79% copper, which is clad in an alloy of 80% silver and 20% copper. For more information on the Kennedy half dollar through the years, check out this YouTube video from DC Coin World. Most circulated examples are worth only their face value, and values for even mint state coins, those that have never been circulated, are relatively modest at most grades. The independent coin graders, the PCGs, value a coin graded MS-60 at just $3. Values climb to $12 at MS-63 and $22 at MS-64. A gem-quality MS-65 example will be worth around $55, while one at MS-66 breaches three figures at $175.
Prices jump again at MS67, with a coin at that level worth around $1,750. 19 coins have been certified at that grade by the PCGS, with only one graded higher. That one is graded MS67+, and is currently valued at $3,150.